CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... Come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. The New International Dictionary has this to say under the heading of cat. The cat is a carnivorous mammal which has long been kept by man in a domestic state. It appears to have originated in Egypt and is probably derived from one of the wild species of North Africa known as the Kaffir cat. So much for the bare and basic facts about the cat. But before this hour has passed, you are destined to learn more. Much more. I promise you. You, you ever felt like you were, you were about to go crazy? I can't say I have, Dad. Uh, what's it like? It's, uh, it's like standing in front of a closed door and not knowing what's on the other side and wanting to know and, and, and being scared to find out be, because what's on the other side can save you or, or kill you. mystery drama, The Therapeutic Cat, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Elspeth Eric and stars Fred Gwynn. It is sponsored in part by Buick Motor Division and Sinoff, the sinus medicines. I'll be back shortly with Act One. The dictionary goes on to say about the cat, most of the breeds, as the Maltese, the tortoiseshell, the tabby, etc., differ from each other only in color or other characteristics of slight importance. So says the dictionary. But you are about to encounter a cat who differs in a most significant way. And that difference gives our play its title, The Therapeutic Cat. <laughs> Let me tell you about myself. My name is Henry Joyce. I'm 59 and a half years old. I have a lot of money, which I accumulated by my own efforts. I live in a big old house on the edge of town. The very house I moved into after I married the mayor's daughter. The, the same house where our son Jack was born. Now, Jack grew into a splendid boy. We sent him to the same college I'd attended. Then, uh, when he was through college, he came back and went into business. My business. He did very well. And now he's president of the company. Came up the hard way. Learned the ropes and is doing a fine job. So, it was only natural that the first person I should think of was Jack. Sit down, Dad. Yeah, right there. Yeah, that's it. A cigar? Uh, no, are uh, uh, giving them up? Uh, they don't taste good anymore. Oh, that's too bad. Uh, uh, f uh, food doesn't taste good and good anymore either. Daddy, are you all right? Uh, I mean, you're not sick or something, are you? Uh, I'm not uh, sick, but I'm something. Like what? Uh, like something. Huh. Well, what does the doctor say? Uh, he says I'm tense. <laughs> I, I could have told him that. Oh, well, what did he say to do about it? Golf. Hey, now, that's a good idea. Golf's a good game. Uh, I tried it. No good, huh? Terrible. Made me tenser than I was before. Uh, Jack, you ever feel like you're going crazy? Crazy? You mean like insane, that kind of crazy? No, I can't say I have. Well, that's how I feel. Oh. Do you think, do you think maybe it's mom, huh? Maybe you still miss her? Oh, no. no. Uh, well, your mother died five years ago. Well, you ever think of getting married again? Uh, that, uh, Jack, I'm not going to try. It was all right when I was young, and and then you came along, and I and I had the business to run. It was, it was good being married then, but no, no, not now. Jack, uh, uh, could you see your way to 
taking me back in here. Here? In, in the office? Or, or, or at the plant? Uh, uh, any place. Dad, you're chairman of the board. So? So what's that? Chairman of the board? No, no, Jack. I mean a job. Something to do, something to put my mind to. So I'll stop thinking about myself. Jack, I... I, I I'm going to jump out of my skin. That's how I feel. I, I'm, I'm, I'm all wrought up. I, 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 I can't sleep or, or anything. Dad, do you ever think of joining a gym? Uh, you, you can't give me a job here. Is, is that what you're trying to tell me? I'll, I'll give it a lot of thought, Dad. I, I really will. Uh, maybe I'll come up with something. Mrs. Bingham. Oh, yes, Mr. Joyce. Well, what's the trouble? Uh, Mrs. Bingham, these eggs are not four minutes. Oh, yes, they are, Mr. Joyce. I timed them. Uh, uh, look at that. The white's all runny. I timed them. I, I can't stand a runny white. Take them away. You you want me to make you some new ones? Never mind. Never mind. I, I couldn't taste them anyway. Oh. Uh, now, uh, Mrs. Bingham, uh, don't cry. Please. It's nothing to cry about. Well, I know how you like your eggs, and I thought I thought I timed them. I always time them. I, I don't know what went wrong. It's all right, it's all right, it's all right. Don't cry about it. I, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to lose my temper. Oh. For Pete's sake, Mrs. Bingham, don't cry. That that just makes things worse. Don't you understand that? Oh, Mr. Joyce, I, I know you've been unhappy lately. After all, living in the same house with you, I, I noticed these things. Uh, well, it's not exactly that I'm unhappy. Well, it's something. Uh, well, <laughs> that's what I told my Jack. Uh, my son. It's it's something, I told him. I try to read books or even the newspaper, and the, the words all run together. They all get jumbled up, and the words go spinning around in my head. Oh, Mr. Joyce. Oh, Mrs. Bingham, I'm finished. I'm I'm all washed up. Uh, Mr. Joyce, I, I I have to tell you something. I, I even asked Jack for a job. <laughs> that was two weeks ago. He said he tried to think of something, but but I knew he wouldn't. He couldn't. And he hasn't. Well, that's what I wanted to tell you. Jack's coming over here to see you. He is? Uh, he's stopping by on his way to the office. How do you know that? I... I called him. I was so worried, Mr. Joyce. If you... Uh, if you called him, that, 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 that doesn't mean he's found something for me to do. Well, it might. No, no, no. No, no, if that was it, he'd have called me. Well, he did say on the phone that he had something he wanted to talk to you about. He did? Yes, yes, he did, Mr. Joyce. Said he hoped you'd be interested. Oh, there he is now. Now, you finish your coffee, and I'll let him in. Head of sales. That could be it. Or, 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 or labor relations. I, oh, I'd be good at that. Well, oh, heck, I'd be good at anything. I mean, it's my business. I started it. I build it up. Merchandising, market research. I know more. Backwards and forwards. Hello, Dad. Oh, oh. Ah. Oh, dear. Oh, sorry. Oh. Coffee cup shoved right out of my hand. Oh, did, did you burn yourself? Oh, it's all right. Hey, I startled you. Oh, it's all right. It's all right. It's all right. I'll get a rag and clean it up. And I'll, I'll bring you some fresh. Yeah. Uh, Jack, uh, sit down. Sit down. Are you sure you're all right, Dad? Oh, yeah, sure, sure. I'm always dropping things. <laughs> uh, sit down. Uh, now, Jack, uh, tell me. Uh, Mrs. Bingham said you'd come up with something. Uh, well, uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, what, what was it? Merchandising? Market research? No, what? no, uh, not those. Uh, uh, labor relations. I could, oh, I could do a job there. Dad, it's not with the firm. Not with the firm. Jack, what else do I know? Oh, if, if it's not with the firm, come on, Jack. What do I know? Dad, I, I was talking with a friend of mine, and we got to discussing, you know, things in general, problems, and, uh, Turns out, his father found himself in the same position as you. A retired widower, very uptight. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, go on. Well, he went to his doctor, uh, this guy's father did, and the doctor came up with something. What? And it worked. Inside a month, it worked. Well, uh, oh, what worked? A cat. What? A cat. Uh, you trying to be funny, Jack? No, honestly, Daddy says it worked for his father, and he thinks it would work for you. 
Uh, a cat. I, I should... I should get a cat. No, no, no. That. Not just get a cat. I mean, after you got the cat, you have to spend time with it. And spend time with a cat. Uh, uh, Jack, what the devil for? Well, you have to follow the cat around, observe it. Whatever the cat does, uh, you do. Now, the point is that the cat is the most relaxed animal in the world. And if you imitate the cat and get the hang of it, why then... Jack, Jack, uh, Jack, get out of my house. And then, Dad, I, don't I, get... I thought you came here to offer me a job, a, 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 a good, respectable job. Dad, I'm sorry. It's if... something I could sink my teeth there in. There isn't anything. And you tell me to get a cat and follow it around. Jack, get out of here. Dad, I only meant to... Get out of here. Get out of here. You and your crummy uh, Yeah, I'll, I'll call you, Dad. Don't bother, Jack. Don't call. Don't come back. Don't do anything. Just, just, just stay away and don't have any more ideas. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Dad. A cat. <laughs> A cat. Holy Moses. My own son. A blithering idiot. I, I began to worry about the business and if he could run it. I, I waited for the business to go on the rocks and... And I added that to all the other terrible things I expected to happen. I, I started to worry about money, though I knew perfectly well I had plenty. I worried about getting to sleep, so I didn't get to sleep. I, I worried about eating, so I didn't eat. I worried about going mad. And the more I worried, the more convinced I was that I was not long for this world. Hello? Hello? It is Henry Joyce. Yes? What about it? Really? Uh, you mean it? Yeah. Well, yeah, 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 send it back. I'm, I'm sorry. I, I'm really very sorry. Oh, you got the phone, did you, Mr. Joyce? Yeah, it was the butcher. I, uh, I forgot to sign his check. Oh, well, that's easily mended. Uh, before him, the grocer phone. I forgot to sign his check, too. And before that, the phone company and the, and the gas and electric. The insurance company, too. Oh, did they call him? Well, you sent them the check for the mortgage payment, and the mortgage company called and said they got the insurance check. Uh, did I sign either of them? Uh, no, sir. And you got the date wrong. Uh, Month or a year? Both. I see. Uh, Mrs. Bingham. Yes? Uh, do, uh, do you know where I could get a cat? You, you said a, a cat? Yes, a, a cat. Oh, well, yeah. I, I suppose you could go to a store, a, a, a pet shop, and, and buy a cat. Yeah, yeah I suppose I could. Oh, there are lots of strays. You you could adopt one. Yeah, adopt one. Yeah, or, yes, uh, oh, I tell you what. My daughter, Denise, she has cats. She does? Oh, lots of them. She takes them in when people don't want them anymore. Or she picks them up on the street and tries to find homes for them. You, you think she'd let me have one? Oh, she'd let you have a dozen. Oh, no, 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 no. Just one will be enough. Uh, one... You know the old adage, imitation is the sincerest form of flattery. I'm sure it's true. But when it comes to cats, do you think they can be flattered? I don't. For everything about a cat suggests such utter indifference that flattery seems not only superfluous, but positively silly. I'll be back shortly with Act Two. Henry Joyce, 59 and a half years old, widowered and retired, found himself on the dizzy verge of a nervous breakdown. His son, Jack, suggested that his father procure a cat to study the cat and ape its movements. Henry returned to his housekeeper, Jane Bingham, and asked if she could get a cat. Jane told him that her daughter, Denise, had a number of cats and would be happy to supply him with one. Uh, about a week later, the cat arrived. It was a black and white cat, 
rather large cat with greenish-yellow eyes and a calculating look. The cat was here to be studied and imitated. That I proceeded to do. It took me two weeks to master the stretch. On all fours, watching the cat closely, I would push backwards on my haunches, digging my hands in the carpet and stretching my arms to their fullest extent. Then, rhythmically forward, the legs extended backwards from the hip sockets. Uh, uh, lovely feeling. Marvelous sensation. Uh, out in the garden, when the cat sharpened her claws on a tree or a post, I arched my back to its fullest the way she did, and drew my nails heavily down the wood, putting my full weight into the effort. I felt my ribs expand and the muscles of my belly tighten. Oh, wonderful feeling. Delicious sensation. I started to feel superb. Mr. Joyce? Yes, Miss Bingham. Oh, you've been out already? I took the cat for a walk in the garden. Oh. You know what she did, Miss Bingham. She she reached for a flower, uh, a gladiolus, it was. It, 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 it was just a little too high for her, but she stretched and she stretched. And, well, she never did get it, but she touched it. So I started reaching for the lowest branch on that fir tree. Uh, you know the one. Mm -hmm. And I reached and I reached and I never quite touched it. But, oh, Mrs. Bingham, what it does for the muscles down your side, uh, 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 right next to your ribs. Oh, it feels good, does it? <laughs> Perfectly marvelous. Uh, you know, the cat was talking of butterfly. Day, and I was right behind her, and I watched the way she picked up her front feet. Absolutely amazing. She holds each foot up before she puts it down on the ground. She lets it hang limp from the elbow. Then, when she puts it down, it's so cautious, so deliberate. Uh, uh, no hurry, no rush, just care and all concentration. Well, we stalked that butterfly for 20 minutes. <laughs> You know something, Mr. Joyce. You're starting to feel better. You you notice that. Uh, Miss Bingham, I took off a few pounds and I started to tighten up. Oh. Uh, around the waist and other places. Miss Bingham, I am going to have to get all new suits. I ordered six of them. Was my tailor ever surprised? I, I had all new measurements. I was actually taller. Can you imagine that? All because of that cat. I was sleeping now the whole night through and cat naps during the day. <laughs> That's right. Cat naps. You know, you want to feel really super, you take a lot of cat naps. Just lie down and think of something pleasant. You know, you wake up feeling ten years younger. I kid you not. Miss Bingham... Yes, Mr. Joyce. Uh, will you come in here, please? I'd like to speak with you. Oh, is something wrong with dinner, Mr. Joyce? Uh, uh, the uh, cat doesn't care too much for the pot roast, Miss Bingham. Uh, 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 she'll eat it, of course, if I leave off the gravy. Uh, Mr. Joyce, I, I give her proper cat food in the kitchen. I don't think she should eat in the kitchen anymore, Miss Bingham. I think she should eat in here with me. And uh, here's what we'll have to eat. Uh, lobster, crab, sardines, white meat of chicken, filet of sole, and caviar. Caviar? Well, she's never had it, but I, I think she'll like it. Mr. Joyce, you, you're spoiling that cat. Uh, Mrs. Bingham, <laughs> that cat is my guru. Uh, that cat is my priest, my psychiatrist. She's my idol, my goddess. Oh, all that I am or hope to be, I owe to this sainted cat. Are, are you falling in love with that animal? Uh, it's possible. It's, it's perfectly possible. Oh. You see, she's made me young again, handsome again, happy again. No woman ever did that for me, Miss Bingham. So why shouldn't I be in love with her? Well, uh, does your son know about this? No, I haven't had time to tell him. But I shall. 
After all, if it weren't for Jack, none of this would have happened. It was all his idea, and I would like to tell him how grateful I am. Also, I want to talk to him about changing my will. Come in, come in. Dad, long time no see. Hey, you look wonderful, Dad. Hey, is that a new suit? Yep, good looking. Uh, what's, what scent you, you got around your neck? Uh, my cat. Y- your, your cat? Good Lord, it is a cat. Wow. Well, what do you know? <laughs> uh, you uh, always carry a cat around with you like that? Slung around your shoulders? Uh, she likes it. <laughs> uh, and, uh, I, I like it. Well, <laughs> sit down, Dad. <clears throat> so, you took my advice, eh? Uh, bought a cat. Jane Bingham's. Uh, daughter sent it over. Seems she has a house full of them. Well, looks like the prescription worked. Oh, Jack, it did. It did. And I'm eternally grateful to you, son. Oh, I know how I poo-poo the idea at first, but, well, as you can see, <laughs> it worked. I've never seen you looking so well. Jack, I've never felt so well. All due to my little, my little friend here. <laughs> now, uh, now, Jack, I want to see that she's provided for, uh, in case anything should happen to me. Oh, nothing's going to happen to you, Dad. Oh, you never know. So, uh, Jack, I would like you to set up a trust fund for her. Well, uh, what, what size trust fund did you have in mind? Uh, substantial, Jack. Substantial. She's accustomed to the best of everything. Uh, yes, I, uh, I can see that. <laughs> she, she looks great, uh, well, what's her name? I, uh, never gave her a name. Oh. It didn't seem necessary. We, uh, we communicate by other means. Oh, what do you mean by that? Well, there's a, uh, spiritual affinity, uh, between my cat and me. Uh, Jack, uh, I would like you to sign an ironclad agreement, uh, to care for this cat so long as... She shall live. Uh, will you do that? I, uh, I, I don't know, Dad. Uh, otherwise, Jack. Uh, maybe I'm allergic to cats. How do I know? Maybe one of the kids is allergic. Who can tell? Uh, allergy or no, this cat's got to be taken care of. And I mean well taken care of. Uh, will you do it? Well, I ought to talk it over with Mark. Otherwise, Jack. All right, Dad. All right, I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll do it. Thank you, Jack. Thank you very much. It's mackerel, darling. Don't you care for it? Oh, I know it's not Dover soap, but we had that last night. Trouble with you is you ate too much of that pate de foie gras before dinner, didn't you now? Yes, you did. Miss Bingham, you can clear the table. Are you all finished? Both of you? Yes. Uh... What have you got there, Miss Bingham? Uh, it's the pillow you wanted. Uh, for her. Uh, oh, yes. Oh, I think she'll like satin, don't you? Uh, Maybe linen would have been better, but the pink satin is very nice. Uh, what do you think, my love? Oh, uh, well, we can always change it. Uh, just take it upstairs and put it on my bed, will you, Miss Bingham? Uh, whereabouts, sir? Head or foot? Well, she's used to sleeping on my pillow, but uh, when I turn over during the night, it disturbs her. So uh, put it alongside mine. Ah. Uh, The side away from the window, I don't want her sleeping in a draft. Yes, Mr. Joyce. Oh, oh, that's Jack. He said he stopped by. Well, I'll let him in. On my way upstairs. Thank you. Now, now, love, how about finishing the cream in the cream pitcher, huh? Ah. You want me to pour it into the saucer for you, darling? Maybe, maybe that would be better. Hey, evening, Dad. Oh, hello, Jack. How's the cat? Uh, she's hardly touched her dinner, but uh, generally speaking, she's fi- just just fine. Uh, Dad, I-, I brought over your copy of the agreement. Oh, fine, fine. Just put it down there, will you? Until uh, she finishes her cream. Everything's set, Mr. Joyce. I-, I put the pillow on the right-hand side of the bed next to yours. Oh, thank you, Miss Bingham. Ah. Uh, Jack, would you excuse me for a minute? I'm going to take this sleepy little thing up to bed. Uh, uh. Uh, be back in a minute. 
As I carried my wonderful cat upstairs, I could hear Miss Bingham and Jack talking in horrified low tones. Oh, Hello, what pillow? For that animal, pink satin, on his bed, next to his pillow. That is incredible. Mrs. Bingham, hmm? do you know what this piece of paper is? It's an agreement I've signed to take care of that cat in case anything happens to him. I smiled to myself. <laughs> Poor ignorant people. To them, a cat was just a cat. To me, a cat was... Well, well at least this cat was the sun and the moon and the stars. The breath of life. The joy of living. My heart was beating fast. I dared not switch on the light for fear of disturbing my sleeping angel. I, I felt my way to the bed and quietly put my darling down on her new pillow. Carefully, I lay down beside her. My voice was gentle when I spoke. Sleeping, my love? Ah, oh, is that you, Henry? I've been waiting for you. Who are you? What are you doing here? Mm, I love my pink pillow. How, 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 how did you get in here? You put me here yourself, my dear. I, I never... What, what kind of a game are you trying to pull on me? It's not a game. Or if it is, it's the best game of all. Listen. Oh, 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 where, where's my cat? What have you done with my cat? I'm your cat. You're nothing of the sort. You, who, who are you? My name's Denise. But you may call me Denny if you like. Denny? Denise? Denise? Why, why you're Mrs. Bickham's daughter. Yes, I am. Oh, she let you in here. When she brought the pillow upstairs, she let you in. Oh, I was here a long time before that. Well, I never saw you. Hmm. You hardly saw anyone but me. Oh, you've learned how to stretch so beautifully, my sweet. And to reach. And your walk is improving a lot. And I know how hard it is on only two legs. What are you talking about? What are you saying? If... 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 If you are my cat. If you were my cat, then... Then, then what do you know? What I always was, dear Henry. A witch. Margaret Elmore, Mother Shipton, Rachel Pinder, the Duchess of Bedford. What do all these ladies have in common? All were thought to be witches. Oh, yes, add to that list frizzle hair, finger of white John's daughter, and great blue eye from Moy. I'll be back shortly with Act Three. Henry Joyce thought that his every dream of love had come true when a piebald cat came into his life. But in his bedroom... When he prepared to lie down beside his unlikely paramour, he was welcomed not by the familiar meow, but by a distinctly human female voice. The voice said to him that she was Denise, daughter of his housekeeper, and that she had been, all along, his beloved cat. If, uh, if you were my cat, if, if you're no longer my cat... Then what are you? What I have always been. A witch. Stay right where you are. I, I'm going to turn on the light. Good Lord. Good. Good Lord. What did you expect? A toothless old hag. You're, you're, you're so young. So beautiful. You don't know much about witches, do you, Henry? I don't believe in witches. And 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 even if I did, I, w I wouldn't believe a witch could turn herself into a cat and 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 and, and back again. 
Oh, what about the mackerel for dinner? Oh. What about the pate de foie gras before dinner? Well, well, you, you must have been in the kitchen with your mother. You, you heard me talking to the cat. I was the cat. I am the cat. I can be the cat again any time I feel like it. No, 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 no. no you, uh, uh, your mother must have told you about the uh, about the cat and me. My mother doesn't even know I'm here. You, your mother doesn't know you can be a cat. There. See, you're beginning to believe me. Then, then your mother's not a, uh, not a, a witch. Mother's a white witch. White witches only do good things. I'm a black witch. You do, uh, bad things. If I wanted to, I, I could be a gray witch. Then sometimes I'd do good things and... Sometimes I do bad things, depending on how I felt at the time. I'd be a gray witch for you, Henry. Would you like that? I don't uh, know. I I just wish. What do you wish, Henry? No, I, I I I I wish I had my cat back, just the way she was. Oh, I couldn't stand being a cat any longer. I loved you too much. Why did you have to change just now? Because it's time. Time? Time for what? Listen. Be quiet and listen. Hear it? I hear the wind. There must, there must be a storm coming up. The wind is from the east. Does that mean something special? Oh, when it blows like that, it means tonight is the night of the Sabbath general. What's the Sabbath, General? Rest your sweet head on my shoulder, and I'll tell you all about it. Comfy? On a desolate mountaintop in the center of France, witches from all over the world will meet tonight. They'll fly in from South America, from Africa, from the Orient, from Siberia, from Melamasia. They, 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 they fly to France? To the Savenne Mountains, my love. Vast, cold, deserted. You fly there? On broomsticks, mostly. Mostly? For every witch, there is a mortal man. For the dancing, you know. And after Monsieur arrives... Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Uh, 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 who is Monsieur? <laughs> the devil, darling. Then what? Then we all tell our tales. <gasps> One at a time, we tell everything we've accomplished since the last Sabbath, General. Oh, I'll have a fine old time. Telling them how I moved in here and made you fall in love with me. <gasps> oh, the devil will be so pleased. You will? I don't think I'll tell him that I fell in love with you. No, oh, I don't think that would please him at all. I think it would make him very angry. After you've uh, told your tales, then you dance. Oh, but first comes the ceremony. But I can't tell you about it. Would you like to see it for yourself, Henry? Me? It's no trouble at all. For every witch, there is one mortal man. Well, I don't... I don't... I don't know. This has all been quite a shock. I... I have to think. I, I, uh, I need to be alone, Denny. All right. I'll go downstairs. <laughs> and talk to Mother. <laughs> but don't take too long to decide. The wind is rising. I lay there and stared at the ceiling. I was in a sweat. Everything had changed. So suddenly, so drastically, so peculiarly, I arose from the bed and started down the stairs. But at the foot, I, I paused. I heard voices. You and your filthy, dirty tricks. How could I ever have brought you into this house if I had known? Mother, I love him. Love? What do you know about love? True. I didn't love him at first. You wanted his money. Yes, I wanted his money. 
And I thought what a good, dirty trick it would be to tell the devil at the Sabbath General. Oh, how he'd laugh. I told you a thousand times to stay away from those places. But when I got here, he was so good. So kind, so sweet. What do you know about goodness and kindness and sweetness? I learned from him, Mother. You think only white witches can understand things like that? And besides... Oh, he's so attractive. You don't know the meaning of love, Denise. I do. I do now, Mother. I even offered to become a gray witch for him. What do you think of that? You couldn't be a gray witch. There isn't an ounce of goodness in you. There could be. I tried so hard for him I could change. For him I could do anything. Denise, I forbid you. Stay away from that man. I can't. I love him too much. You'll ruin him. My mother... Mother, you're in love with him yourself. Oh, you're an impertinent young woman. Of course. Why didn't I see it before? The way you look at him. The way you wait on oh, him. Oh, that's my job. Oh, you must have been jealous of me all these weeks. Jealous of a poor little piebald cat mewing around the house. You had to cook fish for me, didn't you? Then you hate fish. Stop it. Stop it, Denise. Oh, how you must have hated me, Mother. You must have wanted to scratch my eyes out. If only I had. You do love him. Yes. Yes, I love him. I love him with all my heart. You should have seen him when I told him about the Sabbath general. I could turn into a gray witch. If you can do it, I can do it. You'd do anything, wouldn't you? Any dirty trick in the book. Anything to get your claws into him. Yes. Yes, I would. Anything. Well, you can't have him. He's mine. No, he's not. He's mine. He's not. He's mine. I was appalled. Well, absolutely appalled. Standing there in the, the hallway, clutching the pink pillow in my arms, I, I, I thought of rushing in and trying to stop them, for I was afraid they might harm each other. But I, I'd never heard such ferocity before. But... Then, of course, I, I'd never heard two witches talking before, and frankly, I was not sure of what they might do to me. In, in my confusion and my bewilderment, I reached for the telephone and called my son at, at his home. I told him it was imperative that I see him right away, and he said to come right over. Oh, come in, Dad. Oh, thank you, son. Where's your cat? What? You always wear your cat around your neck. Uh, there's no more cat, Jack. Something happened to the cat? Uh, the, Jack, the the cat is Mrs. Bingham's daughter. How's that? She's a witch. Uh, come on into the living room, Dad. I'll get you a brandy. Yeah, now, you just sit down there. While... You, uh, you know when you were at the house, you, 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 you brought that paper over. Uh, yeah? And I went up upstairs. Well, Jack, there was a woman in my bed. Uh, 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 no cat. A, a young woman. Uh, here's your brandy, Dan. I, I, I guess you're surprised uh, to hear this. I, I, I know I was surprised. I can imagine. Jack, it seems that all along, my cat was Denise Bingham. Uh, 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 Denny for short. Jack, you remember I told you the cat came from Mrs. Bingham's daughter's house originally. Drink your brandy, Dan. Well, at first, I didn't believe her when she said she was a witch and could turn herself into a cat and back again. But, you know, then I, I started to listen to her. And, oh, she, she has a lovely voice. Uh, uh, and it all started to sound somehow credible. Mm-hmm. Uh, Denny, uh, uh, Denise says she could make me a wizard. You see, for every witch, there's a mortal man. She, she could take me, Jack, with her on, to the Sabbath general. But uh, it has to be tonight. I don't think you should go anywhere tonight, Dad. I told her I, 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 I would think about it. I think you should stay here with us tonight. But the, but the wind is rising. Come on, Dad. Let me take you upstairs. The guest room is empty. Wait a minute. Wait, Jack. I have to tell you what happened next. You mean there's more? Denise went downstairs to talk to her mother. Her mother's a white witch, uh, by the way. Uh-huh. And after a while, I went downstairs, too. Jack, I heard them talking, uh, arguing, uh, act, fighting. Act, actually, Jack, do you know what they were fighting about? Uh, no, I don't. Me. Me. They were fighting about me. Two women, both witches, 
fighting about who loved me the best. Jack, two beautiful women fighting over me. I, I, I couldn't believe it. That's, that's why I called you. Well, I'm glad you did, Dad. Now, uh, let me take you upstairs and get you into bed. But, Jack, Jack, you... Listen to me. What should I do about them? The, the, the two women. I think you should get rid of them both. You do? Uh, both of them? Both of them. Well, you could be right. Sure I am. Now let's go upstairs. I lay in bed and I wondered. It would have been nice to go to the Sabbath general. But... Just before I dropped off to sleep, I remember thinking, maybe I'll get married again. But then I thought, before I do anything, I'll get me another cat. The witch was born at the same point in time as the imagination of man. The Christian witch descended from the Jewish witch. And before that, there were the great witch families of ancient Greece and Rome. Consider these. Hecate, Circe, Medea, and Pyramide of the Golden Hair. Really, by this time, we should be used to them. I'll be back shortly. Your cat shed her feline shape at will and become a witch? There's no use asking her. She won't tell you. But if I were you, I'd watch her very, very carefully, particularly on nights when the wind is rising in the east. Our cast included Fred Gwynn, Paul Hecht, Bryna Rayburn, and Jada Rowland. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams.